Welcome to the channel, all brand new Chelagon lovers, y'all. Came in here from that stupid WikiHow video. Today we're gonna be doing some real ass art. I'm gonna be doing the virtual plain air thing, which I've been meaning to do for a while. It's an alternative to going outside, taking a nice little sketchbook with you or a canvas and painting what you see. I'm not the type of person to go outside, also it's cold and I would die. I'm just gonna be using Google Street View for this. I'm gonna be picking a random location and later I'll ruin it with memes. I'll draw all of your drawing requests on that background. So yeah, the first step is just going to be picking out a location. Uh, this is what came up first. This is in New Zealand. Manga Wero Road. <laughs> Manga lol xd. Google knows who I am. Alright, well, I don't really feel like drawing this location. Next all right, this is um, Canada with a K. There is a school bus here. Oh boy, a nice little neighborhood. It's it's a bit too cozy. I need a bit more of a civilized area. Next. Oh God, that's not civilized. Next. All right, I, I, I spotted a bottle on the ground here. Who did this? How dare you? All right, next. What are the odds that we will land in a city of some sort? Very beautiful scenery here, but it's too beautiful to be ruined by some horrible stuff. That's just a random ass road a random road in brazil oh what the hell i landed in my own country where is this nowhere near where i live though finding something suitable is gonna be quite difficult boring boring i like these trees Still boring though. I don't even know what exactly I'm looking for, but I'll I'll know it when I see it. I'm liking the vibe I'm receiving off of this place. Cool, cool. Eurobus. What is this? We landed right next to some old dude. They didn't even blur out his face like they usually do. Maybe it's one of the Google employees that were taking the pictures or something. There's another one over here. This makes me a bit uncomfortable. What the f Darn, it's this. Why are there giants coming out of the ground? Oh, damn, this looks like the Windows XP background almost. Trees, trees, boring, random street view, cities only. <laughs> Oh, this one is better. This is a better site. There are a bunch of options here. Stealth, indoor, urban. Yes, that's exactly what I need. I didn't even know there were indoor street views. Maybe I should try that out before I do urban. It placed us at the exit immediately. That's interesting. Holy balls. This would make for a nice background. Maybe I could put all the characters into these seats. Having a nice little dinner here. All right, we are in Hong Kong. Hong Kong. That's not indoor though. Admissions and registration. You know, these indoor areas are quite nice as well. Maybe I shall pick one of these. A lot of options for placement of the characters here. We got to Antarctica with a bunch of penguins. I think this is quite a nice urban area once again. Very nice. I'm so done with looking for something. I'm just gonna pick this one that I already found earlier. We are ready to begin our journey. The first thing we need to do is to get the perspective points into place. I think I could do one point perspective here. All right, let's just put one big fat vanishing point here in the center, like dot. I would usually try to sketch this whole thing out first, but I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a different approach this time. I'm gonna try to block all of this shit in with color right away. I'm gonna do the dark areas as the first thing. Actually, I'm gonna do a couple more guidelines for myself with the line tool. I'm gonna change the ground color a bit because cause it was um, wrong. You know what I'm gonna do now? I will take the polygonal lasso and I will kind of roughly block the shit in. Now I'm gonna subtract from selection and I'm gonna subtract these areas. All right, now we can fill this in. If you can see there's a little bit of a gradient going on here. It's more yellow from here and it's a bit more white from here. So I'm gonna lock this and I'm gonna use a big fat soft brush. That is it. This is the sheet. Now let's create a new layer behind this 
foreground and now let's paint in these ceiling parts here this part right here and this so this whole upper area you can only see the ceiling from there and not the actual back wall because it's so high up that's how perspective works that's how it be <laughs> Oh, I know what's wrong. This corner right here has to move forward a bit. They should be on the same line here on the perspective guide. Mistakes are to be learned from. Let me just grab this layer and fill this part in. I just need to line this upper part up with it now too. There's actually one more perspective point here, which is up there, but there's only a couple of vertical planes on this picture. Only these parts are going upward. Words, so I, I didn't feel the need to do a second perspective point up there. Now I'm just gonna use a bunch of selections and fill them with the soft brush. Let's make that shit big and do it like this. Coolio, my dude. My dudio. Coolio dudio. Nice rhymes by me. New Chow Z track incoming. Oh, by the way, I made a Chow Z SoundCloud page. Follow me on SoundCloud and rate five stars on my tracks. Now, how should I go about this door? The width of it is like this and it's very bright. Cool and good. Now we're just gonna add in this ground area here. Just paint it in with the soft brush once again. Now there is an occurrence called ambient occlusion happening here, which means that planes that are tightly together get darker from the areas where they connect. Oh darn it. Let's move this area back to where it was before because my stupid ass didn't think it must line up with this line right here. All right, there we go. All right, biches. Doing the same thing up here with the ceiling parts now. Oh, there we go. That's the proper color. I had it all wrong before. Oh, there is actually a sort of a round part here. Do Doing around parts with the polygon LS. So very sense making. Yes, I'm still using that word that I made up. All right, it gets quite dark over here as well. All right, I feel like the curve here is a bit too non sense making. So let's transform it. Let's warp that sucker to go up like that. It is the time to create a new layer. Why you ask to do this window part here? Now what your ass is supposed to do next is uh, paint in those window frames here. Okay, I'm starting to think I should have actually added in that second perspective guide. Might as well just do it now. If you're wondering where I got it from, it's from Jonah's De Rose brush pack, which is free and it's good and cool, of course. This is gonna go very high up, so we're only gonna be seeing like a very small portion of it, like this area or something. But the frequency of the lines is going to be a bit too little, so I'm just gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna rotate it so that there would be more lines but uh, to do this properly we need to move this anchor point right towards the center of this thing so that it would rotate around this point I'm actually going to merge them together duplicate the merge layer and do it one more time so that we get extra amount of lines and now we can begin the process of resizing it they must line up with these goddamn poles uh -huh -huh. I think they are not gonna line up perfectly anyway because I did them by hand. Actually, I'm gonna delete them all together and then I'll just make new ones. Follow the damn lines and then I'll use a brush. Boom. There we go. Now there's a couple more lines that I need to line up. For example, this one over here. This line right here matches up, but this one does not. So let's fix that. She is... Now this is a... Uh, Correct. I think what really will add the realism will be these patterns here on the ceiling. You see these squares and stuff? I can just paint those in following my perspective, my lower perspective guide. Use the line tool, just a good old line tool. I'm just gonna do it by hand, just an equal distance away from each other. Let's do the horizontal ones as well. I'm just holding shift to make them perfectly straight since they are not following any vanishing points. All right, very nice, very sexy. They're far from the correct color, so I'm just gonna lock 
unlock this layer and use this big ol' brush again that I've been using for the whole time. And then just pick a darker color, more pressure on the darker areas and less pressure on the lighter areas. Oh, there's also supposed to be some down here. Oh God, looks like I have something messed up here again. My stupid ass didn't follow the upper perspective this time. Let's also fix that door while we're at it. You know, I was gonna do these window frames here, but I was lacking this guy. But we have that now, so, so let's do that shit. Do y'all know what the great part about having a self-made background is for drawing your comments? I will be able to use all the assets of the background. I will have all all of them on separate layers so I can export the piece as separate pieces and use these pieces in front or behind the characters. Real neato. There's this board type of thing here. Once again we can just follow this upper perspective goid. Some sort of shape it is starting to take. There is some sort of a uh, doorway here. Just using the polygonal lasso which is our greatest friend. These don't have to be perfect squares. Nobody will notice as long as you're following the perspective correctly. Just like in hentai, when you render the skin correctly, nobody will pay attention to the broken anatomy. Now we can just fill that in with the brush. Maybe make it a bit brighter from the bottom like dot. Oh darn it. There is one area here which we don't need. Let's just get rid of this part. Oh Budge. Let me get that selection. Let's layer this via copy so that it is on another layer. I want to paint in what's behind this part. Now we can do that if it's on a separate layer. I'm gonna use a layer style here. A bevel and emboss. I'm just gonna hide the highlights. I'm just gonna keep the shadows. Now boom, you have an instantly 3D looking thing. On a closer look, I can see that I referenced the colors a bit messily here the ceiling colors it's a bit brighter and more yellow I'm just gonna grab this and do a little bit of a curves filter here let's add some green and red to make it more orange maybe we can just cut the blues out a bit nice nice noise you know what the tricky part is gonna be the brick pattern on the wall it would be easy if if it were just perfectly straight walls but we're dealing with some curves here so that's gonna be a bit it a bit tricky. I'm just gonna block in a bunch of stuff now. Some lights on the ceiling. I'm just gonna paint them in as one big white thing. To make it look like it's lamps, I'm just gonna put an outer glow on them from the layer styles. Make it a bit yellow to make it look like some cozy ass light. Let's increase the size like this. And boom, there we go. We got some lightsabers. They're a bit too intense right now. Maybe I should lower the brightness a bit and the brightness of the glow, of course. Looks like these poles and stuff are just flat papers right now. These parts are missing, so let's add them in. For this we need... No, we don't need this one, we need this. You know what next? Uh, I want to give it an impression that there is glass here, so I'm using a one edge brush that is soft from one edge and hard from the other for this purpose. All right, that's pretty good, I think. This isn't in the original, but it works. You know what would make this pop right now? The floor. The floor is just one giant thing. You know what I'll do? I'll just create a new pattern. Or wait, maybe I can just find something online. Stone tile flooring. I just want a darn pattern. A seamless pattern that I could repeat. Click here for full resolution. Maybe this will work. I don't know, man. Oh, this one works. This one works. I'm just gonna make it completely black and white. Now I'll copy this and I'll take it down here onto the floor. We're gonna use the distort and we're gonna try to match it with these lines, these perspective lines. I need it to be a bit bigger though, so let's make this even bigger. Let's do like 14,000. This is only 25% zoom. 33, 50, 66. Now this is a large ass image. You can see it on the navigator how big this is. Now let's 
copy it. Now let's zoom the fuck out, activate the perspective, and paste this sucker. It's actually the perfect size. It can cover just about everything. This is probably gonna look off as hell. <laughs> God, it looks like it's floating on top of the actual floor. I'm gonna set the blending mode to overlay so that it covers what we had before. Okay, well, it's a start, man. I'm gonna try to do some ground reflection here. Let's see how that turns out. Okay, well, it's a start. Now let's blur it a bit. I've set this on color dodge mode and another layer on top of it, which is a normal mode. The trick here is to bring out the texture of the tiles. I'm gonna mask out some parts. All right, now we've got this. I'm gonna right click on the thumbnail of this layer and I'll select pixels. Now we've got these lines as a selection and now, 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 now we can delete some parts of those reflection layers. We're missing the horizontal lines here, so I'm just gonna add those in by hand. Maybe I can use some sort of texture brush. Just uh, painting in some more parts that I feel like should be painted in. Now we can't just erase, we gotta also add in some new information. You see there's these white lines next to the dark lines on the original. Let's add that shit in. Maybe uh, I'll just add some hand painted parts to the rest of the floor as well so that it wouldn't look so unnatural. Maybe some color variation to this because it's all very flat and there's some plume blue hues in the OG. All right, but this floor is bothering the hell out of me. I'll create a new layer over it and I'll set it to, I don't know, maybe so soft light mode or something and paint in some variations. I'm actually gonna use a blocky brush for this. Let's try to follow the perspective as well. Yeah, it's starting to look a lot more natural now. Noise, noise. I'm gonna extend these bright lines a bit here for that extra spice. Another thing that would add some spice to this right now would be the ceiling patterns here on this part. They are picking up a lot of the light from the door, so that will add a lot of pop to this, a lot of realism. If you get stuff like this right, then you don't even need to put more detail into other parts because these sorts of things will have a big impact on the overall feel of the thing, a sort of realistic lighting. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty dope and it's pretty cool. Not looking quite right though. I don't know, something's wrong still. I guess I need to add in the actual door patterns. Well, 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 I think that this is getting near to the level where I want it to be. I'll just add in the bricks on the walls and the plants that are everywhere on the original and then it will be done. Brick texture seamless. All right, let's try this one. Let's define pattern. Lulz, good stuff. Let's close this, make a new image, which will be like, let's do 10,000. So let's fill it in. Let's add a pattern overlay. There we go. Now let's copy this. All right, so I guess I'm gonna break this into three parts. I'm gonna make three duplicates of this layer. Let's create a clipping mask, set it on overlay. Let's try to transform this. We need to follow the upper point. I'm gonna erase the parts of it where it will just start to bend and I'll do those parts with the other two layers that I made. I'll just keep this middle part. I'm gonna zoom the hell out. I'm still following the vanishing point with this edge that's out of the scene. Now I'll try to match it with the geometry we've got here. All right, that, that that's pretty good, but this part I'm not quite satisfied with just yet. Let's try to warp this a bit more. That's pretty good. Now they overlap a bit here, so I'm gonna erase the parts where they overlap. Obviously, I can't get them to transition into each other perfectly. That would be very time consuming. Let's add in some imperfections. Let's make another soft light layer and paint in some random crap over it so that it wouldn't be so god darn perfect. 
time for the plants. Let's add in those mother trucking plants and then I'm gonna call it a day. Plants are very fun. I like plants. I love this brush. This is a brush from the Jonas D. Rowe brush set, which is something I use for plants because there is a bunch of randomness in it and you can have some cool ass results with it. I'm just putting in the shadow areas first here and then I'll go over it with a bit of not as dark colors and just using the bristles of the brush to generate some sort of leaf like effect and now let's go in with the brights not quite the result i was looking for maybe i'll try a different technique on the side plant here i'll still start out with the same brush maybe i'll try to lock the opacity this time when going over it yeah that looks pretty cool but i'll unlock it now and paint in some individual leaves sick very sick i think i actually have a bunch of foliage brushes lying around let's try to use something like this these plants here that are only slightly sticking over the edge i'm gonna paint those in with this leaf brush Gosh, well, well, this was exhausting. I did this all in one go. Usually I would do this in many breaks. I'm probably going to do a bunch of adjustments to this before I actually use it in the video and the drawing your comments bid. But I hope some, some of y'all found this useful. Hope there were some cool and good tips in here, mainly about perspective and stuff, because that's the only thing I, I guess I'm better than average at. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this was cool. I'm, I'm I'm excited to finally have a background that isn't stolen for the damn vid. Look forward to drawing your comments episode four, where I'll be putting this into action. So yeah, guys, remember to use your bevel and emboss. Emboss, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Use your layer styles wisely. Use your perspective guides wisely. Use your foliage brushes wisely. I'm out now. See you later, guys. Lol.